so many occasions. So we gather as a community of faith now, united very much in prayer today. We have come to commend him to a loving, caring God. We come to thank God for his life and for all the love that he shared with his family and so many more. We also, too, come to draw inspiration. And in a very special way, we have come to offer the support of our love and our sympathies to his loving wife, Eileen, and to his family, Carol, Linda, Damien, and Karina, and his loving grandchildren, Dara, Sarka, Dean, Keen, Caitlin, Rebecca, Ryan, Adam, Sean, and Danica, his sister, Betty, and brothers, Willie and Michael, and the great-grandchildren, Chloe, Jaden, and Jamie, and sons-in-law, Damien and Martin, and Damien's partner, Petro, and all of the extended family, and many, many neighbors and friends all who knew and loved Pat. So we pray for you in a special way this day as we ask, offer you the support of our love and our prayers. As I say, we are a Christian community. We believe in resurrection. We believe that when we die, we will be going back to God. The book of scriptures are full of wonderful words of hope. So I place them now on Pat's coffin because in life he himself cherished the gospel of Christ May Christ greet him with the words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. Pat also carried the cross of sickness with great courage and strength. There's also the crucifix on his coffin as a reminder of that courage and also as a reminder of the way Jesus carried his cross to save all of us. And in baptism, Pat received the sign of the cross. May he now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. Friends, we believe that all the ties of friendship and affection which knit us as one throughout our lives do not unravel with that. Confident that God always remembers the good we do and forgives all our sins, we now pray asking God to gather Pat to himself. Lord, in our grief, we turn to you today. Are you not the God of love who opened your ears to all? Listen to our prayers for your servant whom you have called from this world. Lead him now into your kingdom of light and peace. Count him among the saints in glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please all be seated now. I'm going to invite um, Cian, um to read the first reading, the scripture, and then um, the boys will lead us in the psalm, and Dean then will read the second reading. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Fear not, I am with you. Be not dismayed, I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you and uphold you with my right hand of justice. For I am the Lord, your God, who grasps your right hand. It is I who say to you, fear not, I will help you. I have brushed away your offenses like a cloud, your sins like a mist. Retur return to me, for I have redeemed you. Can a mother forget her infant? be without tenderness for the child within her womb. Even should she forget, I will never forget you. See upon the palm of my hand, I have written your name. Yes, in joy you shall depart, in peace you shall be brought back. The word of the Lord. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie in pastures green. He leadeth me the quiet waters by. My soul he doth restore again and me to walk don't make within the paths of righteousness in far his own name's sake goodness 
grace and mercy all my life shall surely follow me and in God's house forevermore my dwelling place shall be a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy as for me I am already been poured out as a libation and the time of my departure has come I have fought the good fight I have finished the race I have kept the faith. From, from now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. The word of the Lord. So we stand now to Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ, glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On the first day of the week, two of the disciples were on their way to a village called Amos, seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking together about all that had happened. Now, as they talked this over, Jesus himself came up and walked by their side. But something prevented them from recognizing him. He said to them, what matters are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped short, their faces downcast. Then one of them called Cleopas answered him, You must be the only person staying in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have been happening there these last few days. What things, he asked. All about Jesus of Nazareth, the answered, who proved he was a great prophet by the things he said and did in the sight of God and of the whole people, and how our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death and had him crucified. Our own hope had been that he would be the one to set Israel free. This is not all. Two whole days have gone by since it all happened, and some women from our group have astounded us. They went to the tomb in the early morning, and when they did not find the body, they came back to tell us they had seen a vision of angels who declared he was alive. Some of our friends went to the tomb and found everything exactly as the women had reported, but of him they saw nothing. Then he said to them, You foolish men, so slow to believe the full message of the prophets. Was it not ordained that the Christ should suffer and so enter into his glory? Then starting with Moses and going through all the prophets, he explained to them the passages throughout the scriptures that were about himself. And when they drew near to the village to which they were going, he made as if to go on, but they pressed him to stay with them. It is nearly evening, they said, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. Now while he was with them at the table, he took the bread, said the blessing, broke it, handed it to them. Their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he had vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? They set out that instant and returned to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven assembled together with their companions, who said to them, Yes, it is true. The Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then they told their story of what had happened on the road and how they had recognized him in the breaking of the bread. This is the Gospel of the Lord. That Gospel, the road to Amos, is often used at funerals. It helps Christian communities to come to terms with debt. 
the early Christian community would have loved that gospel story because it helped them to overcome the death of their own leader, Jesus Christ. That gospel story contains four elements that help us as we celebrate Pat's Requiem Mass today. Because the story begins with sadness and ends with a spiritual joy. And as we journey on that road to Emmaus, the same things apply to us as they did back then. We have the two apostles on that road. They were downcast. They were sad because of the death of Jesus, their leader and friend. It was even more sad for them because this Jesus had promised them that he wouldn't die but would live forever. And yet they witnessed his death. He was crucified, placed in the tomb. And then they met this stranger on the road that they didn't recognize at first. And the first thing that this stranger did was he listened to them because the two apostles told the story of Jesus because seemingly this stranger hadn't heard it because they said you must be the only person in Jerusalem who doesn't know what has been happening there these past few days. So they told the story of Jesus. Jesus who was with them, who worked miracles, who raised the dead, who fed the hungry, who promoted justice and peace, who said he wouldn't die, but yet he was dead. And so it is good to tell the story. Because when we tell a person's story, that person is very much alive with us. And a requiem mass, a funeral mass, is a time, an opportunity to tell the story. And today we celebrate and tell Pat's story today. We think of Pat almost, or born almost 78 years ago, living in, um, born in Henry Street. We think of, or 98th Street, we think of his parents, Sarah and Paddy. Pat was the second of a family of five. Baptized here in St. Clair's, went to school in St. Felix. Moved to 22 Church, Year, Church Street after a number of years. And then he married Eileen in Arles Church 50, almost 58 years ago. And that was a loving relationship that was um, cemented by their marriage together. They were a loving couple caring for each other. They lived for a while in Henry Street, Church Street again, and then three years out in Coolock before they moved to their present home in Tree, um, Governey Park, Tree Church Street. And Pat was a real family man. He lived for his family. He was so proud of all of them. He was a wonderful dad. He was their taxi driver too, and also the taxi driver for the dogs, bringing them to the vets and the groomers. And also he loved bringing the grandchildren to school. Always reliable. If any one of them wanted a lift, I'll be there. And he was always available for them. And then too, when the, grand, the great-grandchildren came along, he absolutely adored Jaden, Chloe and Jamie. Would always play with them too. The family have lovely memories of their family holidays, all packed up, heading off to the seaside and rent a house, and everybody would be packed in together, having great fun. All his family were very much part of Pat and his life. And one of Pat's last sentences were, um, was everyone okay? Always looking out and caring for his family. They even helped him to get over fear of the dentist too by bringing them to the pet shop afterwards and buying them maybe a budgie or a goldfish or something else. So we think of Pat's story first and, more, first and foremost as a family man, a loving, wonderful husband and a wonderful father, grandfather, great-grandfather. 
And so I know the family has wonderful memories that will keep them, um, they will keep them, and it will help to keep them as well, um, continuing to have Pat with them. I think of Pat's working career too. His first job was a messenger boy for Murphy's post office in Marlborough Street. And then he was also worked in Dunny's Bakery for a while delivering. Aaron Foods then up at the sugar factory, that was his main job. And that was a place that he stayed in until it closed. Then he went to work for Carlo, Carlo Couriers. And that was meant that he drove to Dublin a lot. And he knew places and he knew Dublin like the back of his hand. So much so that the family saw him as the original Satnav because he had that wonderful sense of direction. If they were ever lost in Dublin, they would ring Pat and he would ask them, well, what building is on your right or left? And he would be able to tell them how to get to where they were going. So Pat was a great worker. He worked all his life. He was never idle. And so we thank God for that part of his story too. We think two of his interests, he, in his early years, in his jubilee years, he played goal, goalie for Greg Cullen and was a great goalie by all accounts. And then when the football pitch was being developed, he was one of the many people who went down to help to pick the stones off of it as well. He did the bit of gardening too, but that was always under the careful instruction um, from Eileen, who herself was the expert at the garden. So Pat followed along um, her Eileen's instructions. And then too, he loved his word searches. We remember him for that. And the, uh, he loved a good Western on TV. And he was a Man United supporter, but we won't go into too much of that today. We'll just leave that to one side. Um, but he's socializing to going with um, Eileen and maybe Pat and Betty and others, going to the boat club or going to the clubhouse or whatever. That was something that he enjoyed as well. And his, all his would have was the McArdles off the shelf. It had to be off the shelf for Pat. So that was his little bit of enjoyment as well. Pat, for many people, is known as his lovely wit, his one-liners as well, that attracted so many people to him as well. And so many here have parts of Pat's story. And I suppose for all of us, the sad thing is that Pat's story has ended in debt too. We would love Pat's story to end like that of the um, fairy tales when it says, and we all lived happily, and they all lived happily ever after. And we reflect on that today, but telling the story is so important. The second thing to focus on in that gospel story was Jesus, or this stranger, they hadn't recognized him yet, he explained the scriptures to them. And we have the scriptures with us at Mass today too. We place the book of scriptures in Pat's coffin at the start to remind us of the wonderful comforting words that are there. The gospel reminds us it was necessary for Jesus to die in order to rise again. We know too from that scriptures, at this time of the year, the grain of wheat, when it's planted, unless it dies, it cannot produce much food. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even though they die, they will live. These are wonderful words. Even in Mass today, too, for Messiah, you know, I hold you, do not be afraid. Trust in him. I hold you with my right hand. Or St. Paul to Timothy in the second reading. I fought the good fight. I finished the race. I kept the faith. And as a result, there is a crown of righteousness prepared for me in the heavens. We know that Pat Hennessy fought the good fight. He finished his race. And above all, he kept his faith. So we believe, too, there is a crown of righteousness for Pat in the heavens. And then the third thing was they invited the two strangers or the two apostles invited the stranger in and they had hospitality together. And suddenly they recognized Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Lots of people think that that gospel story was the first time Mass was really celebrated because they had the scriptures open to them, so they listened to the word of God, but also then the stranger blessed the bread and it became his body and they recognized him in the breaking of the bread. And Eucharist was always so important to Pat. And that's why we have Eucharist at our funeral masses always, because of the importance of being able to recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread. 
Pat over here and decide every Saturday evening at Mass along with Eileen Slagan and Owen about football or whatever. But Mass was so important. And then bringing communion to him in the house. And even this evening before um, Pat died, he sat on the side of the bed and he received communion. And I knew that he knew that that was food for the journey, that he was receiving Jesus and he got that spiritual strength. And so that's why Mass is so important to all of us, because we recognize Jesus on the altar in the breaking of the bread. And they knew then that Jesus was alive, and they went off to tell the community, which is the fourth element. The fourth element is the importance of a community. And I know Eileen and the family have received so much strength and support from the community since Pat got ill, but also since he died on Saturday morning. People come, offer support and help. And that's so important for families in times of bereavement, and that gives them great hope as well. And so we have the four elements. We have telling a pat story, which helps. Also the scripture, the wonderful words of comfort. We'll have the Eucharist in a moment where we will recognize Jesus. And then we have the community present, offering support and strength. And we then believe that Pat is in heaven, that he's with his parents, Sarah and Paddy. He's with to his brother Paul, his little grandchild Stephen, and all who have gone before him. So our story does have a happy ending because our sadness can turn to a spiritual joy. I just leave the final word to his grandson, Adam, which reminds us why we have gathered here. He says, heroes and legends never die. And so that's the message that Pat is alive in heaven with all the saints. And so eternal rest grant unto Pat, O Lord, and may perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest. And may his dear soul and the souls of all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. So now I invite you to um, please stand. I'm going to invite Chloe, Pat's great-granddaughter, and granddaughter Becky. They're going to lead us now in the prayers of the faithful. Grandad touched the lives of all of us. Help us to keep alive in our lives the values and the ideals he put before us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, we ask your blessing today on all those who are seriously ill. Be close to them in their time of sickness. And if it be your will, heal them and restore them to full health again. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those whose lives are dedicated to the care of the sick. In particular, we pray for the doctors, public health nurse, home care team, and sta staff of Kilkenny Hospital who cared for Granda during his illness. May God reward their goodness and kindness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all our departed brothers and sisters. We pray for deceased relatives. May Granda be reunited with them in God's kingdom, where there is no more pain or suffering. Lord, hear us. Lord, grace us be here. Thanks, girls. We pray again for all who are sick. We remember all the many people who have asked for our prayers. We think at Mass today for a woman who is very ill at the moment and has asked, and family has asked for our prayers at this time. Lord, bring all who are sick, bring them healing and peace. Lord, hear us. We also pray today for the repose of the soul of Kathleen Malone, Kulan Kaleshin, who has died, and funeral arrangements for Kathleen will be announced later. So again, we pray for all our dead. Lord, grant them eternal rest. Comfort all who mourn. Lord, hear us. So Lord, may you support us all day long till the shadows lengthen and evening falls. The busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in your mercy, Lord, grant us a safe lodging, a holy rest, and peace at last. We make this prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Now we're going to continue with the Eucharist where we will recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread. So we're going to invite Karina, Dara, Ryan, and Danica to bring to the altar the gifts.
In bread we bring you, Lord, our bodies labor. In wine we offer you our spirit's grief. We do not ask you, Lord, who is my neighbor, but stand united now, one in belief. Oh, we have gladly heard your word, your holy word, and now in answer, Lord, our gifts we bring, our selfish hearts make true, our failing faith renew. Our lives belong to you, our Lord and King. The bread we offer you is blessed and broken, and it becomes for us our spirit's food. Over the cup we bring, your word is spoken. Make it your gift to us, your healing blood. Oh, we have gladly heard your word, your holy word. And now in answer, Lord, our gifts we bring, our selfish hearts make true, our failing faith renew, our lives belong to you, our Lord and friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of Pat, your servant and our friend, we beseech your mercy that Pat, who never doubted Jesus to be a loving Savior, may now find a warm welcome. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, to Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying. As one he chose to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we now proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took the bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his friends, and he said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In the same way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his friends and he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Then he said, Do this 
in memory of me. So now we proclaim together in song the mystery of our faith. Save us, Savior of the world. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. set us free so therefore as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the spirit remember Lord your church spread throughout the world Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Dennis, our Bishop, and all people. Remember your servant and our friend Pat, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that Pat, who was united with your son in a death like his, may now be one with him in resurrection. Remember all our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, we pray. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coheres to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And so we pray through him, with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. So now we all stand as we're going to pray to a loving, caring Father. We pray to God today for courage and strength, for peace, for acceptance. We pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin, safe from all worries, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. So now the peace of the Lord be with you always. So now we wish those around us the peace of Jesus today. So we pray together, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. This has now become Jesus. This is his body and his blood. This is Jesus who died on the cross who rose again, who went back to heaven to prepare a place for all of us. This is Jesus who gives us strength, hope, courage, and peace. Happy are we to be called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only said the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let perpetual light shine upon him with all your saints, for you are rich in mercy. And he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the bread of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of his hand. You dwell in the shelter of the Lord, who abide in his shadow for life. Say to the Lord, my refuge, my rock in whom I trust. And he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the bread of John make you to shine like the sun and hold you in the palm of his hand. The snare of the fowler will never capture you and famine will bring you no fear. Under his wings your refuge, his faithfulness your shield. And he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the bread of John, make you to shine like the sun. And hold you in the palm of his hand. And he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the bread of John, make you to shine like the sun. And hold you in the palm of his hand. And hold you in the palm of his Done, but love unfailing dwells ever here. Shadows fall, but hope prevailing comes every fear. Loving Father, none forsaking, take our hearts of love's own making watch our sleeping guard our waking be always near dark descends but light unending shines through our night you are with us ever lending you strength to sight one in love your truth confessing one in hope of heaven's blessing may we see in love's possessing love's endless light Day is done, but love unfailing dwells ever here. Shadows fall, but hope prevailing comes every fear. 
Loving Father, none forsaking, take our hearts of love's own making. Watch our sleeping, guard our waking, be always Now I invite Sorica to read the communion reflection and then I invite Carol then to say a few words. One night a man had a dream. He dreamt that he was walking along a beach with the Lord. Across the sky flashed the scenes of his life. For each scene he noticed not one with two sets of footprints in the sand. He understood immediately that one belonged to him and the other to the Lord. But then he noticed a curious thing. At the lowest and saddest times in his life, there was only one set of footprints. This bothered him, and so he asked the Lord, how come during the most difficult times in my life, the very times when I most needed you, you left me on my own? The Lord replied, my friend, during your trials and sufferings, when you see only one set of footprints, those footprints are mine. And it was then that I carried you. Hello everybody. Firstly, we'd like to thank everyone for their continuous support over the last few days to remember and honour our dad, especially those who've travelled long distance. We wouldn't have got through it without any of you. Thanks to Dr. Gallagher's practice, doctors and nurses in St. Luke's Kilkenny, Father Dumphy for his guidance and support, the poor Clares for their prayers, and Dad's public health nurse, Anne-Marie O'Brien, who was absolutely outstanding in ensuring Dad had a comfortable end of life. The home care team who saw to it that Dad could have his wish to remain at home throughout his illness. To Yvonne, Anne and Trish of Vedel and Water all the last few days. The staff of our coffee shops for supplying the food. Michael and Paul Horhen for their singing and Carpenter's Funeral Home for looking after everything. And to anyone else I may have forgotten. Thank you very much. My dad, he, he was a gentleman, a great husband, father and grandfather and great grandfather. He was a quiet and unassuming man who never wanted to be the centre of attention. He would have hated all this fuss and he'd say to us, so I'll keep, I'll keep this short. We have no doubt in our minds today that we are our dad's world. That was evident in how he put us, his family, ahead of himself, making sure we had all we had needed, making great memories with extended family members during summer vacations and always being there for each one of us. At the drop of a hat, he dropped everything to be by our side and to help us when needed. He was a rock that never let us down. Dad was lucky to have the best siblings who are all here today and Uncle Paul in spirit. He had great friends throughout his lifetime. I won't name them all because I'd be here all day now for him. Dad was quite witty and always had some funny, smart remarks. He used to tell us that Mammy told him he was happily married, so he must be. As who is he to question it, as Mam was the boss. <laughs> Dad taught us many things as young kids that hold us in good stead today. Good manners, respect, and sound moral values. These values have made us who we are, and it shines through to his grandchildren, his great-grandchildren as well. He made a huge impact on our way of life. As Father Dunphy said earlier, heroes and legends never die, is what my nephew Adam said to his granddad before he passed away. I think the meaning of this is your actions will never die, even if you do. So dad and granddad, you were both our hero and our legend, and our love, patience, understanding, 
and the amazing sense of humor you had until the very end will be remembered and live on inside all of us forever. And for that, we are truly thankful. We love you, Dad, and we'll see you later. Safe home. Thanks, Carol. Well said. So I invite you to please stand now for our concluding prayer. Lord God, whose Son, Jesus, left us in the sacrament of his body food for the journey, mercifully grant it, strengthened by it, that our brother Pat may come to the eternal table of Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Again, thanks for you being here, and also a special thanks to all who participated in Pat's Requiem Mass. Thanks to Michael and Paul for that lovely singing and music, and everyone else. So now, the Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. So we pray our farewell prayers for Pat. So before we go our separate ways, we now take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. So we pray in silence for a few moments, and we're just going to bless Pat's coffin with holy water from the baptismal font. And we remember the day that um, Paddy and Sarah brought him here to this church, to this font, to um, have him baptized. It was the day that he received the promise of heaven for the first time. He began his Christian journey that day. He joined the Christian community. And more importantly, he took Jesus as a friend that day. And that friendship grew and developed over the years. Also incense his coffin to show our love and reverence for the human body as a dwelling place of God's spirit. We bury his body, but we know his soul has now risen to God like the smoke from the incense. <laughs> Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And so our response is, receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid, come to meet him, angels of the Lord. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to Abraham's side. Eternal rest grant unto Pat, O Lord, and may perpetual light shine upon him. And we pray into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We thank you for the blessings you gave Pat in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with Pat forever. In peace now, we take Pat to his place of rest. Amen. And may the angels lead you into paradise, Pat. May the martyrs come to welcome you now, take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. Amen.
and I am down I know my soul so weary when troubles come and my heart burden be I am still and wait here in the silence until you come and sit a while with me you raise me up so I can stand on mountains you raise me up to walk on stormy seas I am strong when I am on your shoulders you raise me up to more than I can be there is no life no life without its hunger each restless heart beats so imperfectly but when you come and I am filled with wonder sometimes I think I glimpse eternity you raise me up so I can stand on mountains you raise me up to walk on stormy seas I am strong when I am on your shoulders you raise me up to more than I can be you raise me up so I can stand on mountains you raise me up to walk on stormy seas I am strong when I am on your shoulders you raise me up to more than I can be you raise me up so I can stand on mountains you raise me up to walk on stormy seas I am strong when I am on your shoulders you raise me up to more than I can be up to more than I can be.